while ago I had teased this case on Instagram, this Pelican case. So uh, now I'm going to walk through what's been going on. A couple of months ago, I got to work on a project for a customer who wanted a very specific build, a really good build, but the idea is they travel a lot, they have a two monitor setup, they've already got to pack up. I had always wanted to build inside a Pelican case, so I pitched this idea to them, they loved it, and I got to work designing something in this that would keep the uh, waterproof nature of it, so obviously these holes on this one are no good, and we keep the shockproof elements of it. And for a month or two, I've been designing and building what I thought would be a lot easier. Uh, turns out, not at all, you know, building your own chassis from scratch. Uh, this is an S340 I've completely torn apart. The idea was to have this in here on some sort of shock pad or hinges where it could pop up, and that's how you run the computer and all the ports are in here, and all the ventilation is in here, and when you close it, you're none the wiser that it's a PC. So I was building my own MATX chassis for this over here. They chose a two terabyte Samsung Evo, Ryzen 2700X. It's gonna be the core of this system with 32 gigs at 3600 megahertz. So very, very good RAM. Very good part choices, 650 watt EVGA SFX, absolutely critical for a build like this. 1070 Ti within a normal form factor, this isn't one of those bulging cards, so this is going to be perfect as well. And uh, we'll get into all this scrap yardage. So basically, halfway through I called him and I was like, this is going to work, but it's going to take me forever. So I have another idea. I went and I bought two of these. I got the silver one out there on the table. I completely stripped it down. This is the Fantex Shift Evolve. And it actually fits in here almost perfectly, if not for, let's show you down here, those little wheels. Those little butt outs for the wheels actually stop this case from just plopping in there and being done and done. Case fits in the Pelican, we can call it a day and just pad it and so that didn't work either. So I went back to a concept that was kind of a hybrid between this and this. As you can see here, we got a brand new one torn apart. Everything, literally everything taken off. And my end result, after all this work and thought and research and measuring, it works pretty much. Still adjusting the hinges, but this is our idea. Now we've got a floating chassis within a Pelican case. When this is mounted correctly, it's not even touching the walls. The idea is you can put everything over here while the case is open, and the system should be able to run like that. This is kind of the final design. A lot of work to do today. Everything's gotta be bolted in perfectly. I'm also gonna use some rubber to kind of butt out the edges of this where it is gonna to touch here briefly. You can see here we've got pneumatic hinges along with, this is actually just an arm from a TV mount that had uh, the nice point of leverage I needed. Okay, just some elements of the modded chassis I want to highlight before I uh, enclose it in the other case. Other than the pneumatic hinges, we also have uh, this rubber put three strips along. That's because this is going to be pushing hard down against it, and while we have the, the hinges to support the bottom and give that some float, I want a little something here to give on the lid um, when you're pushing down on it to not have it deform the chassis or anything. Uh, what else do we have? Custom power button right here. That uh, Fantex plastic button had to go, and uh, that's about it. Like I said, I had to shave off a little bit here. And that was really it, other than ditching the panels. And I think we're good to go. Uh, I'll jump back into the time lapse and we can see assembly of the actual case, yet untouched with beautiful foam. I think I'm gonna save this case for like shipping and stuff or storage. Like it's still a really good case, just too many holes in it. And yeah, there's a nice thin layer on the bottom, which is all we need. We really don't need much because the hydraulics do the work. And as far as the sides not having padding, well, there's going to be hinges here and here that have give. And uh, here there's bumpers, and here it doesn't touch at all, so it's actually covered in that respect. The lid is the most important part as far as padding. That's what's pushing right against it, so that has the egg crate foam. And that uh, also is going to go against these rubber guys that can slide a little and give a little. 
So our lid and panels, we basically just ditched. I mean, this is a lot of weight too. Just this one panel is on its own quite heavy. So it's really gonna help to make this whole system a lot lighter too, that we're really just using the chassis. And I was nervous that the chassis wasn't gonna be strong without the integrity of the panels and the glass and everything. But I was pleasantly surprised that the chassis is just on its own, extremely rigid. You do something like this with it and you, it doesn't twist at all. I mean, I only have one hand right now, but I think because of this middle section and just because of good design on Fantex's part, the chassis itself, which is really all I care about, is really well built. Really also love these mounting options here and here, really creative not only good looking but very universal all right let's get it all measured out for the next case Without doubt, the most challenging build I've done, but these are the builds I want to do that are going to push the envelope for custom PCs. We talked about the shockproof quality that's on. It's basically an open frame chassis floating within a Pelican case for panels. Graphics card gets flipped around, gets more air than this case normally would. We've got new power button to replace the plastic that was on top. This little guy is a lockout, so you can't accidentally shove the thing with your cables plugged in. Cables come out top and bottom. Uh, case can be stood this way, can be run half closed, can be run open. But basically, yeah, like it works now. It took me, you know, probably twice as long as I promised the person and I feel bad about that. But this is without a doubt one of a kind. I've seen Pelican cases. I haven't seen it done to this extent. See right now we've got the lockout so you couldn't 
destroy your cords, you would know to unplug everything, pull this guy up, and then I left this Velcro piece here so that doesn't fly around in transit. That goes there. Give it a shove. And that's it. So the idea is you travel with it like this. No one even knows it's a full desktop PC. So you just kind of let it sit there. Give it a shove right down the middle. And it is its own like pressure eyes. You can hear there's nothing really shifting. Simple engineering, just with little, in this case, these are pneumatic hinges, I believe. They're filled with gas, not liquid, which is good if they break, you know. We are going to throw an AIO liquid cooler in here, too. That's going to be put on rubber mounts. Um, as I go through the build, I'm also kind of going to be reinforcing things extra. Placement of the graphics card in support of that, especially, I'm going to put a lot of care into. Man, this one took forever, but hopefully, if this is a hit, I can repeat this process. Um, this is an awesome option for soldiers traveling base to base who need something they can toss around, you know, in luggage and get quick to their next site, have a gaming rig they can work on themselves. Let's say you got one of these, and I wasn't doing a custom PC. I was just selling this as a chassis for builders like me. I believe there's a step in between desktop where you can do everything yourself and a laptop where you really can't. I think there's this cool middle ground. I love these small form factor PCs, but this also, like a laptop, includes the closure and transportation as part of the design. So yeah, it might not be the smallest ITX case, but it might be the most rugged. We'll see. I don't know how many hardcore tests I want to put it through. I think I'm just going to overbuild it the best I can. I'm not going to guarantee that it's still waterproof like a Pelican case, but I will say it's probably still heavily water resistant because every hole I put in it, which is only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I only put 11 holes in the body of this case and every one has rubber washers screwed down super tight. It might not be as waterproof as the original but it's a hell of a lot more waterproof than if we made, you know, vent holes and cable holes on the outside. You know, if you drop this in a body of water and pulled it out pretty quick, fair guess, I think it'd be fine. I really do. Foam staying in place real nice, cradles everything, you know. I don't know what else to say. I think it's time to build a real computer in it. <laughs>